So, um, hi everyone, I'm Lee. I'm a recent PhD um, graduate from University of Washington. And the topic I'm going to talk about today is part of my PhD research that explores social changes in Iron Age Northeastern Taiwan during the European colonization period. In this presentation, I will focus on burial data and how we can apply Bayesian network modeling to examine social changes. The data and code used for this research are openly available on GitHub that you can check later if you're interested. So um, let's go to the next slides. So before getting started, um, I just want to take a few minutes to talk about a plan to establish an East and Southeast Asia chapter for CAA. So um, in recent years, I um, found there is an increasing number of CAA members working on East Asia and Southeast Asia, which made me started to think about the possibility of having a new chapter. And it would be um, convenient for a local chapter to organize local meetings to exchange our knowledge and skills and ideas, especially we share similar cultural backgrounds and research topics. Also, um, I think, um, East Asia chapter will help to increase the diversity of the CAA community. So currently, um, we're at a very early stage working on forming a steering committee and drafting a constitution for the new chapter that will be presented at the next CAA International Annual General Meeting in June 2020 for a voting. So um, I would like to invite you to join us if you are interested in being a member of steering uh, committee or co-chair the chapter, depending on what kind of role you want to take. So please email me if you are interested in and we can discuss it further. So now let's go back to my, uh, my research. I will start with a brief overview of historical background of my study area and my research motivation. So from the 15th to the 19th century, the Europeans expanded trade between Europe and Asia. The map on the left shows the European trading station in Southeast Asia and East Asia. You can see Northern Taiwan was one important trading center established by the Spanish and later took over by the Dutch in the 17th century. Here shows you the places where the European built their forts in Northern Taiwan. What's very interesting here is we observe relatively complex uh, indigenous societies in northeastern Taiwan, the triangular plain over here, around the same time as the European presence. Archaeological evidence reveals high density of population, long distance trade, and the use of foreign prestige goods in burial contexts, suggesting some level of social differentiation. So I'm curious about whether the emergence of social differentiation resulted from the European colonization in northern Taiwan. This indirect impact could happen at the periphery of colonial centers identified as pericolonial effects by Iqbado, according to his research in the northern Philippines. So my research, my main research passion is did the involvement in long distance trade network lead to social changes in Northeastern Taiwan in a pericolonial context? Can we identify the changes from burials? And can we see, for example, can we see a centralized structure pattern that reveals increased social differentiation after European contact? I will answer this question by looking at burial data from QLAM using network modeling approaches. So now I'm just um, briefly introduce QLAN. QLAN is located at the northern part of Ilan Plain. There are 90 barrels in total recovered um, that can be divided into three major temporal phases, the pre-European, post-European, and Chinese period. In the barrels, imported items such as porcelain and stoneware and the different kind of uh, bits were used as burial goods. According to historical records, trade items were also uh, treated as prestige goods in local indigenous culture. 
Here we use Arial as a proxy to examine the social relations and underlying structure through the similarities between burials based on the theory that burial with the same uh, prestige goods tend to have the same status. To construct network based on similarities, we treat each burial as a node connected to other nodes when they share the same foreign trade items. So the networks uh, constructed here are undirected and weighted since they can have more than one um, items in common. So here you can see the network visualization for both uh, pre and post European burial networks. So now I'm gonna uh, give you some more details about my methods. We use um, network modeling methods to explore the intercorrelations between burials and overall structures. A promising method is uh, exponential random grid models, ergoms, that can provide a flexible way to model and simulate features common in real world networks. For example, homophily. So that means um, nodes with the same attributes tend to form a relationship. So if we, um, if we, if we think of friendships, it would be um, people with the same hobbies tend to be friends. And next is uh, transitivity, which is another um, network features. That means uh, my friends, friends also tend to be my friend. And centralization, that means an individual who has more relations compared to others and is also called popularity in the urban's term. So there are many more features that we can include based on our uh, anthropological hypothesis. Ergams allows direct modeling for the formation of ages between nodes. However, there are some limitations. For example, ergams cannot handle uncertainty very well and also uh, cannot handle missing data. So we attempt to resolve these issues by using a novel method, Bayesian inference on ergams. Bayesian ergons is more intuitive to test anthropological questions by incorporating priors into our models. So if you are not familiar with Bayesian inference, you can think of priors as uh, assumptions um, derived from our previous experience or our data or best guess of our data, which is a key part of Bayesian inference to model uncertainty. In this study, we want to test the hypothesis if the society shows more increased social differentiation after the European arrival. To do this, we model burial network after European presence is presented by low sensitivity and uh, high centralization. So that means um, their last clustering before European contacts and um, the presence of prominent individuals who uh, possess more prestige goods indicating an increased social differentiation after contact with Europeans. We also include burial specific attributes as covariate effects for homophily, such as age, sex, um, ritual practice, and the degree of wealth to explore their importance in network modeling for network formation. So homophily here means um, burials with the same each tend to have similar burial goods. There are steps for a step, um, estimating an organ within a Bayesian framework. The first two steps are specifying the model and priors that I just talked about it in previous slide. Once we specify the models, we fit the Bergen model to our archaeological data and then examine the estimates from the posterior distributions and MCMC chains for convergence to see if there is a good fit to our data. Because we have different network size before and after European contact, we also use vertex bootstrap, a kind of resampling methods for assessing sample size effects to ensure a robust result. So now let's uh, take a look at the result. So after fitting the model, we first checked Bayesian goodness of fit diagnostic plots. The box plots you see over here, um, they represent distribution calculated on 100 network graphs simulated from the estimated posterior 
distribution and red line are our observed networks, which is our real archaeological data. And the gray lines, um, um, they are the 95% confidence intervals. So we can see the red lines are mostly um, located in the 95% confidence intervals. That means our both models fit the observed networks well. Now let's look at the posterior distribution, and I would like to draw your attention to transitivity and centralization. For the pre-European network, the blue one, we can see a high positive value. You can see the long uh, tail over here for transitivity that suggests the presence of multiple subgroups sharing burial goods in common. In contrast, the strong negative centralization shows there is a tendency toward decentralization that reflects most burials having a similar number of ties without any prominent individuals. For the post-European network, the red one, we see a positive value of centralization, which indicates the presence of prominent individuals having more relations with other burials and possess more uh, prestige goods. Also, uh, the, value, the value of transitivity is mostly lower than the values of a uh, pre-European network. This change in burial networks may indicate changes in social structure. Next, we look at burial specific variables that can tell us their importance in network formation. This table shows the estimates of posterior mean, median, and 95% confidence interval for all variables. A positive value indicates a larger effect from the network variable on network formation. The results show that the pre-European network could be associated with ritual practice, since uh, most va values are positive that you can see on the distribution plot here. For post-European network, it seems that it's more related to wealth differences. For uh, transitivity and centralization, we already saw the plot of posterior distribution in previous slide and here we can clearly see the substantial differences before and after European presence. Overall, the results meet my um, our presentation of a more centralized network after European contact that suggests increased social differentiation and social, change, social changes due to frequent trade activities with Europeans. Because we have different sizes of burials from two time periods, we also conducted vertex bootstrap to understand the sample size effect on our models. The basic idea is to remove nodes at certain percentages from 5 to 40 percent for both networks using resampling. The results show there is a consistent and obvious difference between the two networks at up to 35% node removals for centralization variables, but for transitivity and density, we can see a great overlap that shows there is no uh, difference. So returning to my uh, research question, can we identify the changes from burials that reveal increased social differentiation? The answer here is yes. We observe a centralized burial network with um, wealth differences after European presence. In contrast, for the pre-European period, we see a decentralized structure with more subgroups associated with ritual practice before European contacts. So this indicates an increased social, uh, social differentiation that may be caused by a paraphonial effect. In this research, we demonstrate how did we use Bayesian network modeling to test our anthropological uh, hypotheses and identify the differences in burial structure. So um, to promote research reproduci re reproducibility, all the data and code are available online um, on our uh, repository. You can check here. And if you want to know more about the details of these methods, you can check our paper just published last month on Journal of Archaeological Science. And uh, I also have a preprint on social archive that you can check. 
So finally, I want to thank those researchers, institutions, and funding agencies that helped me a lot during my PhD. And that's all for my presentation. Thank you all for your attention.